This is the day of resurrection. Today the sun is risen. Jesus, the son of Mary. Jesus, the king of glory. Let us worship God. Shall we look to God in prayer? God of life, we praise you that you are the source of our being. We thank you for the theological education that enables us to understand your word contextually and apply appropriately to our life situations. Enable the theological teachers and the students to be guided by your spirit in order to make people faithful and committed to their calling. Through Jesus Christ, our mediator, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To begin our service, let us sing together the song which is screened. Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Together, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve Thee in newness of life to the glory of Thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God, Living God, we acclaim you, majestic in holiness, worthy of praise, worker of wonders. In the beginning you created the universe, you made the sun and stars above our heads, the earth beneath our feet, your word brought forth the rocks and streams, the surging seas, the wild winds and the mild. You fashioned a life in all its myriad forms and shaped from clay the wonder of the human frame. You spoke your word to those whom you had chosen. In disobedience they turned from your commands. You came yourself in Christ, the word made flesh, but he was shunned despised by all, forsaken in the darkness of the cross. You made the tree of death, the tree of life, the empty grave a sign of glorious hope. You raised your son and brought him to your side again, where now he lives to pray on our behalf. Therefore, with all your people and with the whole company of heaven, we praise you in the angels hymn holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest let us now hear the bible readings வாசிக்கும் படியாக தெரிந்து கொள்ளப்பட்ட முதலாம் வேத பாடம் உபாகமத்தின் புஸ்தகம் ஆறாம் அதிகாரம் இருபதாம் வசனம் முதல் இருபத்தி ஐந்தாம் வசனம் வரை அடங்கியுள்ள தேவனுடைய வார்த்தையை கேளுங்கள் உபாகமம் ஆறு இருபது முதல் இருபத்தி ஐந்து வரை நாளைக்கு உன் புத்திரன் நம்முடைய தேவனாக கர்த்தர் உங்களுக்கு கட்டளைத்த இந்த ஸ்டாச்சுகளும் கட்டளைகளும் நியாயங்களும் என்ன என்று உன்னிடத்தில் கேட்டால் நீ உன் புத்திரனை நோக்கி நாங்கள் எகிப்திலே பார்வோனுக்கு அடிமைகளாயிருந்தோம் கர்த்தர் பலத்த கையினாலே எங்களை எகிப்திலிருந்து புறப்பட பண்ணினார் கர்த்தர் எங்கள் கண்களுக்கு முன்பாக எகிப்தின் மேலும் பார்வோன் மேலும் அவன் குடும்பம் அனைத்தின் மேலும் குழிதான பெரிய அடையாளங்களையும் அற்புதங்களையும் விளங்க பண்ணி தாம் நம்முடைய பிதாக்களுக்கு ஆணையிட்டு கொடுத்த தேசத்துக்கு எங்களை அழைத்து கொண்டு போய் அதை நமக்கு கொடுக்கும்படி எங்களை அவ்விடத்திலிருந்து புறப்பட பண்ணினார் இந்நாளில் இருக்கிறது போல நம்மை அவர் உயிரோடே காப்பதற்கும் என்னாலும் நன்றியாய் இருக்கிறதற்கும் நம்முடைய தேவனாகிய கர்த்தருக்கு பயந்து இந்த எல்லா கட்டளைகளின் படியையும் செய்ய கர்த்தர் நமக்கு கட்டளையிட்டார் நம்முடைய தேவனாகிய கர்த்தர் நமக்கு கட்டளையிட்டபடியே நாம் அவர் சமூகத்தில் இந்த எல்லா கட்டளைகளின் படியையும் செய்ய சாவதானமாய் இருந்தால் நமக்கு நீதியாய் இருக்கும் என்று சொல்வாயாக பாடம் முடிந்தது தேவனே உமக்கு மகிமை உண்டாவதாக house and sat by the sea and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore 
Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seeds, fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell along thrones, and the thrones sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to thee, O God. Good morning, friends, and a very warm welcome to Bishop Heber Chapel online service. Today it's our joy to come together in God's presence in different places and worship Him. What is the meaning of these stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? This is a question that the Scripture tells us will have to be answered for generations by those who know the law and believed it and practiced it in their day-to-day -day life. Theological education is a theme given for our meditation today. Theological education is in essence passing on our understanding of God, His Word and His Word to generations that follow us. But why is it important to pass on theological knowledge or education to those who follow us? We saw that God is reminding us in the scripture lesson that was read to us in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, the question reminding us uh, for, you know, for future generation. The future generation uh, will ask us this question. What is the meaning of these stipulations, decrees and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? This knowledge has been passed on from generation to generation. For the last 3,500 years approximately, including the time of the Old Testament. Today we will briefly try to see why theological education is important or why we need to study the word of God. In the parable of the sower of the seed, we read in Matthew chapter 13 which was read to us, we saw about the sower sowing the seed which is the word of God. It falls on different types of soil, yielding different types of result. The seed is the same, but the soil is different. The seed that fell on the good ground is what is expected from the teaching of the word of God, or in other words, by theological education. When I say theological education, I do not limit myself to theological teaching that happens in a theological institutions, seminaries, uh, alone. It is knowledge about God and His Word that is passed on at every place, including the home, the church and uh, any other forum. You know, why theological education? Three things that I want to meditate with you. First of all, it helps us to know God. Secondly, it helps us to obey God. Thirdly, it helps us to have a meaningful, joyful life. Taking the first thing. It helps us to know God. Deuteronomy 6 verse 2 says, So that you, you know, you should study the word of God, teach the word of God, so that you, your children, and their children after them, may fear the Lord your God, as long as you live, by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, so that you may fear God. Deuteronomy 6.24 also says the same thing. The, the Lord, you know, teach these laws that the Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God. So that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. Learn these laws and teach these laws of God so that you may fear the Lord God. The usage fear the Lord used here is equal to saying know who your God is and know his greatness and character, including his righteousness, his justice, his mercy, and his holiness. These attributes of God 
is what makes a man fear God or respect God. The word used for fear God is Yare, which is in Hebrew, which will mean a great sense of respect, awe and moral fear. In other words, God wants us to study the word of God so that we will know God, experience him, know him well. History is full of people and scholars who have tried to study the word of God so that they can deny it, so they can prove that there is no God. But that is not what God has asked us to study his law and his word for. We need to ask ourselves, as we study the word of God, are we able to know God deeper and better? Is our respect and awesomeness for God increasing as we study God's word? Is It is possible that we are like the soil where the sea, the, the, where the uh, the seeds of the word of God fell on the roadside. You know, it, we can be like the roadside. You know, the seeds fell on the roadside and they were not concerned about it. You know, they were, they did not take the word of God seriously. They were not interested in studying the word of God or taking it to know God. They, they did not care about the message of the kingdom of God. That is in the word of God. You know, many times we can be people who will sit in the church, in the Bible studies, without any interest in, in taking the word of God. So the seeds are there. They are taken away by birds. You know, when the word of God, we study all of that without any interest, without any keenness to know God, it can be taken away. And the scripture reminds us, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of these laws? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. But the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. You know, the Lord. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us and give this beautiful land. And there is a very clear linking of the word of God with personal life and the experience of God. So studying the word of God should help us to know God greater, deeper and to begin to fear him or respect him and honor him and worship him. Secondly, the word of God, studying the word of God should help us to know how to obey him, where to obey him. Learning the word of God is not intended to increase our knowledge alone, but to enable us so that we will obey God. The Deuteronomy passage repeatedly reminds us that the purpose of studying the law of God is that we may obey the Lord all the days of our life. We study so deeply that every day, every moment, we will learn to obey Him. Deuteronomy 6.24, which I already referred to. It, uh, let me read again. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we, may, we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he commanded us, that will be our righteousness. To obey. Deuteronomy 6 verse 3 again says, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. It is possible that we are all keen in studying the word of God and attending Bible study classes and so on. Sometimes we become so happy and self-content that we studied the word of God. You know, we will be so happy that okay, I studied the word of God so much and I know uh, I have a good knowledge of the word of God. But we forget that unless we obey the word, it means very, very little or it can be all the more counterproductive. It is like learning all the traffic rules and pass a written test of driving with high marks, high marks in written test. But when you drive the vehicle, you never obey traffic rules and end up in accident. Friends, the word of God, learning the word of God is to help us to obey the law of God. God wants us to be people who obey, study the word of God. That with the clear intention that we will obey what God tells us. The psalmist in Psalm 119 repeatedly reminds us so many times that uh, word obey is there. Of the importance of obeying the word of God. I am just taking two verses for just for example. Verse 
hundred and hundred and one. This is in Psalm hundred and nineteen. The psalmist says, I have more understanding than the elders because I obey your precepts. 101 says, I have kept my feet from every evil path because I obey your word. Studying the word of God should enable us to do what God tells us. Now the, uh, epi uh, the epistle of uh, James uh, also reminds us in chapter 1 verse 22. Uh, he says, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word. But does not do what it says. Is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself. Goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. You look at it. You study it. And you so see where you stand. But you forget to obey. Theological education should be something that will change our lives directs and direct and guide our lives. Unfortunately, we can see a trend where there are many scholars of the word of God who do not consider obeying the word as important at all. This is just like Pharisees. They were experts in the laws and they were so expert that they knew exactly how they can be legally right even when disobeying the spirit of the law. Theological education is not to create a new generation of Pharisees who will know everything about the word of God but do not care to obey the word as God intends. We are in a journey with all kinds of challenges and dangers. In this journey, the word of God is our light and our guide. By obeying the word of God, we are protected from the dangers that come our way and destroy our life. I will not be wrong if I say that all the fights and quarrels that we find in churches today is because we do not know God from the depth and we do not care to sincerely obey the word of God. So in our efforts at theological education, we should always remember that the purpose of learning the word of God is that we will be able to obey the word of God. Thirdly, studying the word of God helps us to have a meaningful life. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, uh, 24, which we already saw, it tells, The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. Same chapter verse 2 says, So that you teach the word of God so that you may enjoy long life. The portion of a child of God who follows his word and obeys him is always an enjoyable life. Irrespective of challenges and difficulties, he or she can always rejoice and be happy. There is nothing that can bring happiness and abundance to one's life as that can be achieved by experiencing God and walking in his statutes. The richness and joy of life is made possible by a walk with God which follows our knowledge and obedience to God's word. The testimony of Paul about happiness and contentment in life is seen in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. Paul says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to be in plenty, to have plenty. I have learned the secret. I have learned the secret of being content in life in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Being content in every situation is because of the personal presence of God in his life. I can do all this, you know, whether I am rich or poor, whether I am well-fed or hungry, I can be content and be happy because of him who is with me. Are we people who often get frustrated when things don't happen the way we wanted it to happen? Do we become discontent when we don't get what we worked hard for? When our goals are not met? When we lose friends? Or when we are misunderstood? Paul reminds us to rejoice always. Give thanks for everything and pray without ceasing. All of that was because of the revelation and personal experience 
that Paul had with Jesus Christ. I can do all things, all things through him who strengthens me. Theological education should lead us to an enriched life, a rejoicing life, a happy life. There is no life that can be as rich as the one with the giver of life. He is a giver of life and if we walk with him, there is no better life. There cannot be a life that can be richer. <coughs> Theological education has to be purposeful. It cannot be and should not be an intellectual exercise that may make us another set of Pharisees with a no lot of knowledge about the word of God, but without any experience of God. Studying the word of God should lead us to know God deeper and at a personal level, helping us to fear him and respect him. Theological education should help us to be keen to obey him at every step of our life. Theological education should finally lead us to have an abundant life, a life enriched with the word of God and the light of his word. We are all familiar with that famous hymn that uh, almost brings all the thoughts that I shared with you in a, in a small uh, way. Uh, in a nutshell, that hymn uh, talks about the very same thing that I have been mentioning. And that hymn goes like this, you know, the, when we walk with the Lord. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do, while we do his goodwill, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile, his presence will quickly drive it away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, not a sigh, nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. What a great experience to study the word of God so that we will know him and fear him and respect him. So that we will obey his word so that our feet will be kept away from dangers. So that we will be enriched in our life because we know we are walking with God. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. Amen. Let us profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed as screened. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing the closing hymn as it is screened, at which a time the offer tree will be received. You can bring the offer tree when you come next time to Bishop Heber Chapel.
Let us look to God in prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for the good morning that you had granted unto us. You gave us a good night's rest and refreshed us in the morning to come unto your presence and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the theological education Sunday today, on which a day you revealed divinity to humanity to walk on your ways. May justice roll down like waters to experience social justice and peace in our localities and communities. May the kingdom of God be established on earth where we shall worship you as King and Lord in your kingdom. As we begin the new academic year 2022 to 2023, we pray, O oh God, that your grace and guidance be upon everyone as we delegate our responsibilities. We thank you for your goodness and mercy showered upon us in the previous academic year and in the past. We pray for your guiding light to guide and to protect us from all kinds of evil and danger. We thank you for the received offer tree. Bless the hands who offered for the extension of your kingdom. We pray for the halls, the residents and the wardens. Be with them. Anoint them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Help them to have a smooth year with your grace. We pray for all who celebrate their birthdays, their wedding anniversaries or special days. Remain with them. As the continuing students are returning from their places to begin the new academic year, we pray that you will grant them travel mercies to reach safely here in campus. We pray for fresh anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit upon them. Bless us, send us with your blessing. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with all of us this day and for evermore. Oh.